Hello, and welcome to another edition of Questions for Lawyers. I'm your host, Jeff Edelman. As I've said before, the reason this show exists is I was getting a lot of questions from people who they know I do personal injury work, but they were afraid to call other attorneys who do other lines of work. And because of the nature of what I do, I know a lot of attorneys who do different specialties, as you've seen, family law, criminal defense. And today we have a very timely guest. We have my old Nova Southeastern Law School classmate, <laughs> John McMenamin from Newport Ritchie, Florida. John, this is going to be a fun show. I know it. Jeff, thanks for having me. Well, it's uh, it's a privilege. This is who who would have thought in 1999 we'd be doing something like this. It's hard but, to imagine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure we're entertaining quite a few people out there uh, who know us from way back then. We were in the same section together. Had all the same teachers. Um, I remember meeting you when I had my knee brace on, and we just hit it up and. You know, I couldn't, you couldn't shake me off. So Been friends ever since. Exactly. Well, I brought John on the show today because, well, it's the first week of June and it is hurricane season in Florida. And throughout the time that I've known John, he has been involved in homeowners property damage claims, including hurricane claims. So I figure what better person to come on? John, if you could, can you please tell everybody uh, a little bit about uh, your experience in property damage cases? Sure. Uh, since, well, we graduated in 2002, so uh, I actually worked with my family's law firm since uh, 1999 dealing with property insurance claims, not as an attorney, but uh, became an attorney in 2002 dealing with property insurance. Um, Dealt a lot with, uh, with the claims in 2004, 2005, 2006, dealing with uh, all the hurricanes that came through Florida and several since then. And quite frankly, we've got, uh, uh, I've probably got close to 10,000 claims under my belt at this point with, uh, with sinkholes, hurricanes, and whatnot. Um, had a lot of experience dealing with anything from, from a single family home to uh, a 400 unit condo association. So I've run the gamut with my, my experience with, uh, with, with property claims. Now, when you're dealing with property damage claims, there's a significant difference dealing with a, say a leaky pipe in somebody's house, as opposed to a hurricane claim. Can you explain that difference in terms of how they're processed? Absolutely. It's uh, it's night and day. Um, you know, the hurricane claims can go, can range from, uh, you know, a few tiles blown off your roof all the way to catastrophic damage where, you know, the home is blown away or the beach is eroded in and the, uh, the waterfront home is, uh, is actually, you know, destroyed. We saw that in Mexico City Beach this summer and we've seen quite a few uh, destructive storms in the last, uh, well, there haven't been as many recently, but 2004, 5, and 6 were pretty bad. Um, those claims, one of the main differences is with your insurance policy, you've got a high deductible. Most policies have a 6% of your total coverage for your dwelling as a deductible. So you've got high deductibles. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other problem is that you've got, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people in the same boat uh, who have damage to their homes. So the adjusters are spread thin and they're spread throughout, you know, sometimes a very large area, including the whole state. So you have a lot of out-of-state adjusters coming in. You have people that have less experience adjusting those claims. Whereas with a single water loss, for example, if you had a washing machine hose break in your home, you're going to experience a lot different claim because you're going to have focused attention on you for, uh, for that particular claim rather than having uh, a, an adjuster processing hundreds, if not thousands of claims at a time. So that's the main difference. The experience will be much, uh, much more focused on you if you have a single loss. And that makes sense because when there's a hurricane that comes through, the damages are so catastrophic that it's hard to even get insurers to write in Florida, correct? Absolutely. The, uh, there's a lot of new insurers that are in Florida since 2011. There were a lot of statutory changes for property insurance law. And there were 
about 30 new insurers that popped up. Uh, Citizens Property Insurance Corporation used to be the largest insurer in Florida for 10 or 15 years. And by the very statute that created Citizens, they were required to depopulate their policies. So a lot of those policies have been sold off to these smaller companies. So it's very important when you're shopping for insurance for your home to make sure that you speak with your agent and that you understand what company you're getting for your insurance because the smaller companies have much higher risk of going out of business if there's a catastrophic storm, which could be catastrophic in terms of your finances if your insurance company's not there. Let me ask you this, John, because we hear a lot about this. If you have a claim, you got to get a public adjuster, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that right in your it, eyes? Well, it, I have a little bit different philosophy than a mm -hmm. lot of other attorneys. Uh, public adjusters do have a place, but there's a lot of times when because of the, the nature of property insurance claims and with some of the statutory changes that are due to take effect July 1st of this year, dealing with water losses in particular, such as broken pipes and things like that, and the eroding coverages that we have each year, the insurance company sends you a little packet of paperwork that are endorsements that change your coverage each year. It's my opinion, at least, that it's a good idea to at least consult with an attorney uh, before you do anything else, because the attorneys are the only ones that can give you legal advice and interpret the policy. The public adjusters definitely have a place. There's a lot of good ones out there, but there's also, uh, just like there's a lot of bad lawyers, there's a lot of bad public adjusters, and you want to make sure that you get the most solid advice possible. Check reviews, check online, look for people's uh, uh, reviews of the attorneys that you might select or public adjusters, but getting a public adjuster right off the bat before you have any initial con uh, conversation with the insurance company isn't necessarily uh, always the case. Uh, I believe that an attorney is your first step. So if somebody comes to you with, say, a, uh, well, a property damage claim and they don't have a public adjuster, what, what would your first uh, advice be to them? Well, I, I have a belief that the insurance company should, uh, should try to do the right thing and take care of their insured. That doesn't always happen. No, it in doesn't. Some yeah, we all know that or else we wouldn't have a job. Right. But, uh, an attorney, most attorneys will give you a consultation, at least uh, initially for free. Uh, I do that. And I would be more than happy to go over any of the policy uh, provisions and any of the initial correspondence you have with the insurance company before you get anyone else involved to see where they're headed with the claim and to kind of give you an idea of where I think it might be going and the complexity of the claim. If it's a simple claim with a simple loss, then quite frankly, you may not need anyone involved. But uh, I would definitely consult with an attorney just because you want to make sure that you follow the policy terms because uh, I'm sure you hear it just as much as I do, Jeff, um, in, in personal injury and in property insurance. I can't tell you if I had a nickel for every time that I heard I have full coverage uh, I'd probably be retired and there is no such thing as full coverage. That's it's a misnomer. That is, it's like nails on a chalkboard whenever somebody says full coverage to me, because it's like full coverage could be anywhere from 10,000 to a million dollars. What does it full mean? Exactly. And they, each policy with homeowners insurance can be very different. Um, and there's different companies that have different policies with different, uh, different programs involved, uh, different conditions, things that the insurance company requires the insured to do. And you want to make sure that you're following through with everything you need to do in order to make sure that there's coverage for your loss. Something I ask every guest on here pretty much, John, is how you get paid. And since we're talking about public adjusters as well, I think it's important to talk about how a public adjuster gets paid as opposed to how an attorney gets paid for a property damage claim. Can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, public adjusters generally charge between 10 and 20% of the total amount of your claim. So if you were to settle a claim for $100,000, your public adjuster would get between 10 and 20% of the proceeds of that claim. Now, with an attorney, 
they are, uh, we also work on contingency for the most part. And our rate is usually a little bit higher, but sometimes the, the, uh, you get into situations where your public adjuster uh, can't do any more for you. So you've got 10 or 20 percent for going to a public adjuster and then going to an attorney secondarily, you're going to have an additional fee on top of that. That's a contingency where we take a percentage of any claim. However, the important part of being of hiring an attorney is that there is a statute in place that allows an attorney to recover, uh, potentially recover attorney's fees right. from the other side if, in fact, we're successful and we're the prevailing party. But just be aware, there is a, uh, there's a great likelihood most claims will settle prior to getting to a point where the insurance company is forced by a court to pay attorney's fees. So it does come out of the year settlement it's, it, most of the time, but there's a great likelihood that if we are a prevailing party at trial, we will get our attorney's fees from the insurance company. A public adjuster doesn't have that ability. I want to bring something up, touching on what you said, John. 10 to 20% for a public adjuster. If you play a, pay a contingency fee of, say, a third to an attorney, uh, you're potentially looking at over, over 50% for fees, whereas while you may think it's cheaper to go with the public adjuster initially, a public adjuster can't file a lawsuit. That's true. A public adjuster can't give legal advice. A public adjuster can't file a lawsuit. Now, as I said before, a public adjuster does have a place. Uh, there are times when a public adjuster can handle your claim, but as claims get more and more difficult because the policies are becoming more and more tricky, and because of some recent, recent statutory changes that are going into effect July 1st, uh, it's, it's highly recommended that you speak with an attorney before you hire anyone. And one thing to be very, very aware of and cautious of is if there is a hurricane, you'll likely have people going through your neighborhood, whether it be contractors or public adjusters, because attorneys can't solicit door to door. We have different rules. But there's going to be people knocking at your door, sending you mailers, uh, you know, talking to you, walking through the neighborhoods, trying to get you to uh, sign a contract with them. And some contractors even do this. Uh, contractors are not allowed to adjust claims and, and adjust the claims as an adjuster would do with an insurance company. But some companies still do that. There's a lot of predators out there. Be very careful and be cautious before you... Uh, you sign anything, and that's even more reason to go speak with an attorney if someone's approached you before you sign anything. We actually have a, uh, a question that was posted to us on Facebook by Terry Davies, uh, John. Great. Uh, my daughter and I bought a house in Port St. Lucie West, and of course we had to have the house inspected. Got the green light and got insurance. Within two weeks, a hurricane hit. We got wind. For some reason, the insurance company came out, inspected roof only, said we needed a whole new roof. Um, that is actually not a question, but that is something where you can help somebody if there is damage to get a new roof. Isn't that right? Very, very possibly. Uh, mm -hmm. with, with hurricane damage, the, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions and, and you know, even a lot of the insurance adjusters for the insurance companies, in my opinion, don't understand the rules dealing with uh, replacement of a roof. So if you've got a tile roof, it's even more of a problem, but if you have a shingle roof and you have quite a bit of damage to that roof, the insurance company may be required to replace the entire roof rather than just patching a portion of it. And very likely, uh, at least based on my experience in the last hurricanes that came through this area, uh, people that had minimal roof damage, they would pay them a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand dollars, or say that their deductible, their the claim itself was below the deductible deductible amount. I was successful in many instances in getting the insurance company to pay the cost to replace the roof, even though they said that they weren't going to pay up front, saying it was below the deductible amount. John, you touched on some legislative changes, uh, and I think you're talking in particular with the assignment of benefits change. Can you yes. discuss? Can you discuss that change for us a little bit? Absolutely. 
just a just a little background first. An assignment of benefits is something that most people don't understand. And up to the point of this new latest reform uh, under House Bill seven six oh five, I can't I can't remember the number off the top. Seven oh six five. Seven oh six five. I, I had the numbers transposed. Um, that's still something that's brand new. It has not gone into effect yet. It starts July 1st. But an assignment of benefits is a contract that you may have between, well, public adjusters use it, uh, contractors that do dry out and water remediation use it. And what that means is that you're turning over your rights to the benefits, the amounts to be paid under your claim to that other party. And unfortunately, most people uh, don't read the contract fully or it's not made clear to them and they sign these contracts, whereas the insurance company has to include that third party vendor or contractor on your, your check. So that party can even file a lawsuit without your, without your permission, uh, but you have to cooperate in trying to collect those benefits mm -hmm. if, in fact, there's a lawsuit filed. So. That's the basis of it. What has happened is there's been a lot of abuse and a lot of, uh, a, a lot of fraudulent issues that have been brought up with these assignment of benefits. And people uh, don't know what they're getting into. They end up getting put into a position that they don't want to be in. Um, they have their houses torn apart for a period of time, and they end up in litigation regardless of whether they want to be or not. And that's due to these assignments of benefits. The new legislation that's to take effect July 1st is so new that attorneys are still digesting it. So it's something that's going to place new uh, requirements on the homeowner. It can pl place the homeowner at risk if they don't. Those particular uh, uh, requirements. So there's a lot to be said about uh, making sure that that, that homeowner um, has the proper legal advice and they will be able to follow the requirements of the insurance policy so they don't have their claim denied for the wrongful reason. Understood. Um, so that's going to be something that's going to be a little different come around my birthday, July 1st. Uh, John, I think that it would be... Uh, it would it would be negligent on my part not to bring up mold claims sure. uh, for property damage because I seem to get a lot of calls concerning mold. Um, those cases can be complicated as well, isn't that right? Mold cases can be very complicated because uh, when I first started my legal career in 2002, uh, there weren't a lot of limitations in the insurance policies on mold. Mm -hmm. Over the years, the coverage has gotten less and less. Most policies, if they have any coverage for mold, is limited to $10,000 at this point, and that would include the cost of any testing. So if there's mold, a mold claim being made, first of all, the mold has to be caused by something that's covered under the policy. For example, because you have mold in your house due to faulty maintenance of your roof, that wouldn't necessarily be covered under most policies. However, if you have a water leak in your house and the water isn't dried out quickly enough or effectively enough, um, and there's mold that results, there can be coverage. So mm -hmm. it's tricky to get the coverage for the mold and there is a limitation on that mold coverage. So if you have a water loss uh, or if you suspect that you have water intruding into your home, the first step is to make sure that you get that water stopped, whether it's a leaky roof or whether it's a broken pipe, you get that water shut off immediately. And before you hire any of these dry out contractors that, that want to come into your house, this deals with the new house bill and the law that's to take effect July 1st. I would contact my insurance company and make sure that you have permission from your insurance company because a lot of companies now have staff uh, that will come out and dry your house out rather than hiring a third-party company. That's another part of this. But you want to make sure that you try to mitigate any water damage before mold starts. That way you don't have to get into the mess of dealing with mold problems. Managed repair programs. Yes. Tell us something, about that. Okay. Managed repair programs are something that 
uh, have evolved over the last 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, at least in my opinion, it started with citizens with what they called an option to repair. And many companies now believe that they can come in and send, basically send in a crew of their choosing to go ahead and uh, send, uh, send in their contractors to do repairs to your home, and you'll never actually see dollars from the claim. You lose control over the people that are coming into your house, which poses a lot of concerns in my eyes. I don't want, you know, most people have to work, so they have to allow the contractors in their home to continue to, uh, continue to work without having to take a lot of time off of work. And you've got people in your home, you don't know who they are, you don't know anything about their background, you don't know if they're going through your drawers, you don't know if they're going through your belongings. Um, and the wow. insurance companies, when you sign that insurance policy to get the policy, you're signing a contract, which means you're agreeing to this. And there's actually some companies out there that will try to entice you to participate in this program because it saves them money, in my opinion. Uh, and they'll actually offer you a premium discount. But in my opinion, you're tripping over a dollar to pick up a penny. Well, that's really good advice, uh, John, and I would expect nothing less. Uh -huh. um, let me ask you this. In conclusion, with hurricane season uh, right around the corner, uh, do you have any last-minute advice for anybody listening, what they should do? God forbid we actually have to make some hurricane claims. Is there anything preemptively that you'd recommend people doing, like, this week to make sure that if they have to make a claim that their ducks are in a row. Absolutely. Uh, be very, be very, uh, do, do your homework, be educated in the agency that you use for your insurance. First of all, the days of having going to your local insurance office where they sell one product from one company and that agent is actually acting on be, your behalf those days are over. Most agents are simply brokers for many different insurance companies. You may not get the attention that you need and the explanations that you need of the coverage. Most people just say, I need insurance. What's the cheapest policy? Give me that. And they pay their bill. Well, that doesn't work anymore. There are optional coverages. There are coverages that different companies offer that, that one company may not. My suggestion is to be proactive, go to your agent, ask questions, find out what's covered, and don't have a surprise the day after the hurricane that you don't have coverage for certain items in your home or you don't have sufficient coverage to take care of your property. Insurance is there for a reason. It should be all-inclusive in covering what you need, but you may have to purchase items a la carte or you may have to find a different company that's going to provide better coverage for you. Not all policies are created equally. That's the truth. Well, uh, Mr. McMenamin, can you tell anybody watching or listening how they can reach you? Absolutely. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If you have policy questions that your agent can't answer, or if you have claim questions, please feel free to log on to my website, My Trinity Lawyer. My office is in Trinity, Florida. Uh, which is also Newport Ritchie, depending on who you ask. Uh, it's my, T-R-I-N-I-T-Y, lawyer.com. Or feel free to contact my office at 727-372-7595. Uh, I'm more than happy to speak with anyone at any time and give you my two cents and see if I can help you uh, uh, either through the claim process or maybe make sure that you understand your claim uh, or I'm sorry, understand your policy more fully so that you can get some changes made with your agent. John, this has been a real treat. I can't thank you enough for coming on and educating us about this very important topic. Um, I thank all of you who have been loyal listeners, watchers mm -hmm. during this season. There's only three shows left for this first season of Questions for Lawyers. Next week, I will have a former insurance defense adversary on the mm -hmm. line with me, my good pal, Doug Melamed from Banker Lopez. We're going to be talking about 
uh, insurance defense and also for uh, premises liability, how some small businesses can avoid personal injury cases just by doing some very simple things. So I always enjoy talking to Doug Melamed and I'm looking forward to having him on here. But uh, John, always good to see you. And, Jeff, great uh, to see you. And I'll, I'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely be in touch. Uh, Absolutely. Thank, thank you everybody for uh, watching and we'll see you on June 13th with Doug Melamed talking about personal injury defense and liability uh, prevention for small businesses. Thank you. I'm Jeff Edelman. This is Questions for Lawyers.